Hello, beautiful soul. I'm Vicki Howie of ChakraBoosters.com, the creator of Chakra Boosters Healing Tattoos. And now in 2021, I'm also the creator of CirclingSpace.com. It's an online place where we gather to share more authentic communication and connection. And it's awesome. <laughs> So I've left you some links below for some free gifts to come and check out Circling Space. I do tapping circles there and we have facilitators from across the globe. All right, welcome to your energy forecast for June 2021. Basically, if you haven't been here before, Please subscribe and share this information. I'm not an astrology channel. I'm a chakra channel, and I will give you a chakra take on this all. But basically, it means that I don't get these energy forecasts out as much through search engine stuff. So if you can share it, I would be so grateful. And if you subscribe, I would love to have you be part of my tribe. It's on, it's an honor, like a total honor. <laughs> so... Let me tell you what happens here. Basically, I go through some themes for the month. I talk about the predominant chakras. I will go through several dates and I pull two goddess cards as well at the end, one for the first half of the month and one for the second half of the month. So be sure to stick around for that. And this month, I'm also going to start doing what I call the sweet day, which is the sweetest day of the month, the one where you can just, ah, oh, <laughs> and I'll probably tell you the most challenging, uh, the little warning sign day of the month as well. I'm going to start doing that with every report. Okay, first of all, June. What does June look like? Well, we have a solar eclipse that, of course, is tied to a lunar eclipse that we just had in the last part of May. And we have Uranus squaring Saturn. For the second time, they're going to do it three times exactly this year and if you count the loose orb between them they're squaring the entire year this is a massive titan fight <laughs> this is the old versus the new and it is responsible for much of what we see in the world right now of so much revolutionary energy both inside of ourselves and also outside <laughs> very much outside as well so that's happening this month, mid-month. And we also have Mercury in retrograde in Gemini, its domicile, and it'll be over this month. So we'll have at least a little over a week where it will be direct and things will be getting back on track with communications, tech stuff, all that. Okay, the chakra emphases this month are the throat without a doubt takes the cake very close behind though is sacral energy there's a lot of sacral energy here and the throat and the sacral chakras love hanging out together this is the artistry dyad i like to call it because we create from the feminine out of pure joy in the sacral and then if we're really truly being ourselves we're authentic and we stand up in our fullest masculine then we uh, come to a level of mastery. Our artistry comes to a level of mastery, of, of influence of others, inspiration, innovation. That's what the throat chakra is about. And with a lot of Gemini energy this month, we've got a lot of throat chakra energy. We also have less influence but influence from the crown chakra with Jupiter still being in Pisces for the whole month and other things that are going on but that's the main one for sure and then solar plexus energy and you know of course we've got some solar plexus energy we've got a solar eclipse and it's a special very fiery solar eclipse and I'll talk about that in a moment all right, so sacral energy starts when we look at the numerology for the month. It's an 11 universal month. June is 11, right? You add the 6, the 2, the 0, the 2, and the 1 for June 2021, and you get 11, a higher number in numerology that relates to both the sacral and also to third eye and crown energy, to upper 
uh, energy that's connected to divinity, our higher self in the third eye, and then the awe, you know, the God consciousness, the divine in the crown. So 11, this higher number, it stands for two in the sacral, but it also if is the awakening to this Aquarian age, 11. It's divine and it is asking us to step into our spiritual self from the divine from the feminine place so step into the divine from a feminine place and that's why it's called the divine feminine and we've been seeing it a lot right 11 11 11 11 <laughs> this is 11 universal month so good sacral and upper chakra energy especially the highest two chakras and it's also in a five universal year. So we've got throat chakra energy, but mostly because we have a solar eclipse in Gemini. We just have Mercury retrograde in Gemini. And Mercury is also conjunct uh, the sun and the moon in Gemini when we have the eclipse. So they're all hanging out there. This is a very, there's a lot of influence here. It's very big. And this Gemini eclipse, there isn't going to be another one. There have been several over the last couple of years, and there isn't going to be another one now till 2029. So I feel like this is a real crescendo in Gemini and throat chakra energy. Let's see, I brought up a meta theme this month. I wrote down a meta theme because I had my three themes that turned out to be kind of like suggestions rather than themes more like I have two do's and one don't. Um, but I wanted to share a meta theme and that meta theme is spiritual growth. It's inevitable. It's been happening. You've probably felt it shaking your very foundations in May and it's gonna keep going in June. And think of it like you have a yard and there's um, dirt in your yard. It's your front yard. And it's going to grow. It's going to grow weeds or grass or something. It's going to grow. Well, that's spirit. Spirit's going to grow. It's going to keep growing. And this month, It's going to. there's going to be a strong feeling of that. So you can either garden and tend to that or you can just let it grow and get whatever you get. And I recommend tending to your garden, being a good spiritual gardener because we can't stop the growth right now. It's huge as we're moving into deeper and deeper age of Aquarius energy, uh, more and more um, light energy that's coming onto the planet because of where we are in the solar system. I'm, you can feel it. The old is getting broken up and the new is arising and that new is of a higher frequency, is of more light more healing, more connection. Me as an empath, I feel my empathic skills just just on their own broadening and strengthening. Three thematic suggestions for this month. And as I said a moment ago, it's one do and two do no, two, two do's and one don't. Okay, and so I'll start with a do. Do look at your relational communications, especially around power. In all relationships, it's real important that it's power with, not power over. Now, as I say that, you could be either, if you were in a relationship, because our culture is so used to power over that we've been taught that way. Like it's really hard for us to take power dynamics out or to really make it very power with versus power over. I know it seems like it, it it shouldn't be or wouldn't be, but think about it. When a culture is away for a long time, it just seeps into everything that we do. And we don't even mean it to after a certain point. So I want to break it down to something real simple. It's your responsibility to communicate clearly in your relationship, especially the stuff you've been holding back out of fear because that means if it's out of fear or, you know, yeah, fear, just fear, then you're holding back your power. And that's a power over. That gives the other person in the relationship power over you. And when it comes to spiritual people, and if you're watching this, I know you're a spiritual person. I've seen more people 
who are spiritual who actually give their power away than take another's power. But we also need to watch, especially in our shadow side, for any way, passive aggressive or any other way that we might try to have power over in a relationship. So the goal is power with. How can you create more teamwork, more relational communications where you're really being honest with your boundaries, but you're also seeking honesty from the other, okay? Second, I'm gonna give you the don't. Don't decide on ideas, and especially around anything not personal, social issues, just ideas, thoughts, what you believe. Like, don't be deciding that in June. And do not take sides. Try not to take sides, especially on something that's recently changed or you're recently learning about. This Gemini energy is a learning exploratory energy that takes on a lot of different sources. And if you, you can get lost in it really easily. Um, and you, it's better to let yourself sit and marinate in, in, that's all I, my guides just showed me that, like literally, like sitting in it like a jacuzzi, like marinating in the ideas relaxing into them. I think that's why I had the jacuzzi vision. Relax into the ideas. See if they feel true in your body, not just your mind. And see if they stick around and stick with you if you uh, wait for a little while before you really commit to them. And then finally, the third one is do take a leap into the new you. And this goes along with what I was saying about the meta theme that spirit spiritual change is happening. It's just happening. So it's like, it's almost like you can jump off the cliff, cliff or get pushed. <laughs> and if you jump off, you can make sure there's a net or have a parachute or a paraglider. Is that what you call them? Whatever it is, you can, you can be prepared to a certain degree. It'll still have a rush. It'll still have unknown elements. And that's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, that is really so much a part of what spiritual growth is about, about walking into the unknown. So do take a leap to, if you've been saying, oh, I'm really tired of my job. It's not satisfying me. I'm really tired of um, whatever it is, whatever you're tired of that you've been doing kind of rote, that you've been doing rote, take the leap, take the leap. And also what old identities have you been holding on to? Let go of the masks. I think there's real symbolism in this taking and putting on the masks all the time to remind us, to let us feel into who are we really? Who are you? Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> and what masks am I wearing um, at any given time? So take a leap into discovering the new you by moving outside your comfort zone. That's my third thematic suggestion for this month. Now let's look at some dates. Before I look at specific dates, I want to remind you that we're coming into the month with Mercury in retrograde in Gemini, which is its domicile. It's very comfortable, very powerful there, but it also means that the technology and um, social things and even local social travel um, that we think of in regard to Gemini could be more problematic because um, Mercury and Gemini are so related. So it's like having an extra dose of Mercury retrograde. At the same time, I want to remind you, I know before I started getting more involved in astrology, I used to hear about Mercury retrograde and all I would think was, oh, now my car is going to give me trouble or my computer or I'm going to lose my travel ticket or I would think that way. And while that stuff might happen, I travel a lot. I really end up traveling a lot because you guys know how much I used to travel before COVID. And I've, I've traveled a lot during Mercury retrograde. And I personally, but I can be backwards about a lot of things. I personally haven't had a lot of trouble with it. It's just on the day it goes retrograde and the day it goes direct. So I'll talk to you about that further down. And that's the day you're going to want to watch out for. But still... The key thing to know about Mercury retrograde is that it is a big opportunity. It's not just something that snafus our day-to-day -day life. It's something that's saying, wait, slow down, remember, review, redo. <laughs> like, remember first, 
Then review as you're remembering. Feel into it. What, look at the patterns. We, they say that insanity, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and wanting, expecting different results. So we need to do different things. So review how have you been doing things and look and see what arises that you want to shift to create that new you that we're inviting out this month. <sighs> and then finally, there's that aspect of once you've remembered and once you've reviewed, now you can redo. You can actually reconstruct. You can redo anything you want from a project, a website. A, 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 you can get back to people that you've known who you haven't seen in a long time that, that, that are tugging at you for some reason in your heartstrings or they're on your mind. Uh, there's so many things you can do. And basically, I just like to think of it as kind of almost like during Mercury retrograde, which is usually three plus weeks or so it it's the first part I I'm thinking of just like really remembering and then softly in that middle section really starting to look at what I remember and reviewing it and then finally getting to a place well how do I want to change it what do I want to redo reconstruct and any other reword you want to come up with okay so we're starting the month mercury retrograde in Gemini June 2nd, Venus goes into Cancer, and she'll be there until the 27th. Now, you guys know I'm kind of a Venus freak, so of course I'm going to include this because she's going to be in Cancer the whole month. Now, this is sacral energy. I, I talked about the 11 universal month being sacral energy, but this is really sacral energy. Venus on the clamshell coming out of the ocean. La! You know, she's so beautiful. She stands for that feminine energy. She's about relationships and creativity and, um, and she's related to Taurus, which is also about our, our, our money and our physical pleasures in life. And Cancer's about home and emotions and more of the motherly feminine. So Venus is not in her domicile, but she's not necessarily uncomfortable here. It's very watery. Venus is watery. Cancer is watery. So we're talking about lots of watery energy. Use it this month. Use the sacral. Step into your feminine. Mars then enters June 4th. Mars enters Cancer. So now we're looking at something very different than Venus. Venus is the feminine. Mars is the masculine. Venus is the goddess. Mars is the warrior. Mars is like, I don't like going in here. <laughs> because Cancer is the, the hider. Mars is the fighter, right? It's like uh, flee, freeze, or fight. Well, Cancer is more like freeze or flee, <laughs> right? Hide go in the shell and Mars is like, now nah, let's fight. So there's, there's discomfort here. Mars is, feels heavy when Mars is in cancer. Like he can't pull out his, his spear and do anything. So my advice here is to not push. Don't push forward when Mars goes into cancer. Just, it's only a week. Take a breath, take it easy. Besides, this is a good time to be doing that reviewing with Mercury retrograde rather than moving forward, putting the forward movement on hold and just really reviewing and learning about yourself by looking back and remembering. Okay, on the 10th, we have a really big event. We have the new moon solar eclipse, an annular solar eclipse in Gemini at 3.53 a.m. Pacific, so change for your time wherever you are in the world. Now it's 20 degrees, it rounds up, it's 19 and I can't remember how many minutes, maybe 47 minutes, it rounds up to 20 degrees. So it's at 20 degrees and we've had that two again, we have that two energy there, it's pulling in that two energy. It's also called this type of eclipse, the moon is too far away to cover the sun, so you're going to see the sun behind the moon if you're where you can see it and it is something we call a ring of fire. So it's definitely drawing up solar plexus energy, our self-respect, our personal power that I was talking about uh, in the themes. It's a big kick start. Oh, and I did want to tell you, uh, let me see if I can remember where it is in the world, because it's not here in the US, but you can see it in Siberia, in Greenland, in Canada, and in the North Pole. 
Those are the four places in the world where you will be able to see, not maybe all of those areas, but in those countries, uh, the ring of fire around um, the moon, you know, being in front, you'll see the ring of fire of the sun. To me, that's a, it's a really powerful symbol for stepping into your own power, in particular around your highest masculine, your authenticity, your integrity. So in a new moon, it's a kickstart, right? In a solar eclipse new moon with that ring of fire, we're talking a super kickstart, like totally rebooting the system. So I highly advise that you do some sort of ritual. Like if you have a fire and you can actually like write stuff down and put it in the fire, burn stuff, something, it's always good to burn something to get that fire feeling. Or if you just have a candle, you can look at the flame or enjoy lighting the candles for each thing that you want to intend. Sometimes it's good not to go too overboard on the intentions, just have one or two so you can really focus on them. And of course, focus is a solar plexus thing itself. Let me give you a few questions I created to help you come up with intentions for this new moon. What beliefs are no longer serving you? And how can you cultivate a more open mind? So if there's something you want to do mind-wise, or what do you want to learn? Speaking of the mind, what do you want to learn and what's the best way to learn it? School, school online or person, or just reading books, self-study like that, or modeling, having a mentor, maybe following a mentor and modeling what they do. What's best? Like have that curiosity of Gemini. What, what are you curious about? That's another good question. Is there something you're really curious about? Go get into that. Whether it's a hobby, something you've been curious that you've never tried, you've never done. This is a great time to do that. Let the curiosity lead you. Can you feel how exciting that is? And what kind of communicator do you want to be? Ah, this is so much about communication, this, this solar eclipse. And as I mentioned before, we won't have another Gemini eclipse until 2029. So claim what kind of communicator do you want to be? And how can you live in your highest integrity? So you might want to make an intention around living in your highest integrity. Basically, any throat chakra intention at all, any Gemini or throat chakra intention will be great for this new moon. Okay, let's move on to some more dates. On the 11th, Mars enters Leo. I just want to tell you that because your inner warrior is going to kick in and you're still going to be in Mercury retrograde. So don't let it just, uh, don't go zero to 60 right off the, the starting line. Okay, and remember that the best things to take action on now at that time, I won't say now, but on the 11th and moving forward until at least the 22nd will be rethinks, redoing things. Now that you've looked at things during Mercury retrograde, what do you want to shift? So rather than something completely new, put that Mars and Leo, which is a very strong combination, put that energy into redoing something. On the 14th, Saturn in Aquarius is square Uranus in Taurus directly, exactly. Okay, so we have three times this year, February 14th, June 14th, and December 24th that this happens. There's a loose orb so that these two are in a fight. <laughs> they are square. I shouldn't say fight, but they're, fr they're friction for each other, this good friction that's causing growth. And it's causing us to move into the age. It's causing us not to move in, to create the age of Aquarius in a very tangible way. So this is a really good thing. It's the old against the new. It's the conservative against the radical. It's the structures against the freedom. Can you feel that? And and Saturn is in Aquarius, which is creating the structures that will be able to sustain the age of Aquarius and letting things that don't fit Aquarius finally crumble. And Uranus is in Taurus, where we're seeing all kinds of change around Taurus rules is ruled by 
um, Venus and we're talking about money there and physical pleasures so we're seeing our money system change a lot this year we're seeing lots and lots of crypto currency movement and it's almost like I almost feel like an, an old-fashioned old-timer or something when I pull out cash money I, I like cash but when I pull it out I feel like I'm I'm a dinosaur or something so there's this real clash that is creating revolution and it's creating it inwardly and outwardly so it's good for you on the 14th to feel that energy what's the revolution that's happening within you because that's tied to that new you that is arising there is a new you that is arising and also there is a whole new society of the new us's all the new you's are getting together right the new us's are getting together and we're creating a whole new age out of this energy just you might want to be aware that it just might be that that clashing might be a little more powerful just right on that day or right before or right after but it's pretty much a whole yearly theme uh, i just wanted you to really take note on the day that it's exact on the 21st this is what i'm going to call my sweet day okay and i'm decided i'm going to in the forecast i'm going to start having a sweet day and a challenge day the sweet day for this month is the 21st because venus in cancer all that water all that feminine energy and heart and ease is trine which is ease and harmony neptune which is dreamy in pisces which is spiritual and loving and you know the, the it's, it's it's the domicile so you have neptunes in its domicile in pisces at least it used to be it's the ancient ruler of pisces so we're talking about pretty much third eye energy for neptune and pisces so it's like just it's all feminine it's sacral the the lowest most embodied feminine that sacral energy cancer's more in the heart you know venus is in the sacral cancer's got a lot of heart even though cancer's still sacral too because it's emotions and water right it's a water sign and that crab comes out of the ocean and then Neptune right we've got the trident of Neptune so we're still talking about water but we're talking about water in the spiritual realm the third eye so it's just a dreamy relaxed feminine day this is a sweet day I'm gonna call it spa day because of all the feminine energy and I say relax because this is the day before mercury retro mercury goes direct comes out of retrograde so you may have already guessed but my challenge day is the 22nd, the day that Mercury is. We don't have, I, I didn't see any days this month that really were like, ooh, other than the, the square on the 14th, but we're feeling that energy all year. And there might be some eruptions, possibly something might come to the head in our external world. But for the most part, personally, I think the 22nd is the one to watch out for. The 22nd, because when, when Mercury goes direct, it's just, Ooh, snap view central when it goes retrograde and when it comes direct so avoid you know contracts and and doing uh, deep communication talks and deciding on things just just let them go for a couple more days okay and on the 24th we have a full moon in Capricorn at 11 39 a.m. Pacific it's at three degrees of Capricorn so there we get that solar energy again I can just feel it now the thing about this moon is it's full moons are emotional <sighs> they're just like it's like the water is overflowing the moon is full everything is ripe and it's just you can just feel the energy this is the least emotional full moon i've felt into in so long it just feels like an unemotional full moon now that having been said there's a lot of emotion on the planet there's a lot of feminine energy on the planet so there's already a lot and all full moons are emotional but as full moons moons go this one feels really quite hmm quite straightforward so on a full moon what you want to do on a new moon as we talked about you want to set intentions especially a solar eclipse new moon you want to 
kickstart some intentions. On a full moon, you want to release anything that needs to be released and you want to celebrate what you've accomplished. You want to celebrate what's come to completion. And I have written down a few things that I think might help you feel into what you might want to celebrate or be aware of what you might want to let go of. So the first one I, I wrote down was your worldly material and business success. Okay, very Capricorn, right? Your worldly, your material or business success. That's what I meant by worldly. Do you have some that you haven't even celebrated? Sometimes we don't celebrate these things in the spiritual world, but the root chakra and business and everything you do in the material world is just as spiritual as spiritual things because all the chakras are equal. The root chakra is consciousness as well. Consciousness radiates in all of us. So what successes in the material world can you honor? Or where is some area where you've worked on one too long or it feels stale or old, just let it go. And how about your balance between work and play? Do you have a good balance there? Can you celebrate having a good balance there? Or do you need to let go of something that will give you a better work-play balance? And this one feels like probably the most important one, even though I made it third, which is newfound self-power. Can you release any fear you have or any overly looking up to pedestal putting that you have for authority? Do you fear authority or do you look up at an authority figure too much that takes away your self-power? Claim your self-power back on this full moon. Really claim it in a physical way. And then finally, uh, how's your balance between logic and emotions, between the mind and the, the sacral and heart, right? How is that balance hmm, between feeling Mind and feeling, mind and feeling. And can you let go of something that might give you, if you're overthinking, and by the way, if I could give you one caution, I forgot to mention this, for this entire month, Gemini can be so lower mind, like just chatter, 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 go, 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 not higher mind, just the mind that thinks, 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 and has a bunch of different options. Watch overthinking this month. Really watch it. And it's not so much I'm thinking I need to stop thinking because if you think that you need to stop thinking or think about how you're thinking, then you're just thinking more. <laughs> and I know that was annoying, but I wanted you to really remember it the way I said it, okay? Instead of thinking more about thinking, when you notice or even feel that you're overthinking, just put your hands on your heart, go right to your heart. Go right to feeling and go right to your sacral. So you might put one hand on your womb and one hand on your heart or both hands on your heart depending on if you want to feel your loving state or you want to feel a lot of your different emotions and your deeper embodiment in the feminine. On the 30th, we have Mars in Leo and Saturn in Aquarius in opposition. And again, Aquarius is fixed and Leo is fixed. So we have fixed again and we have the wise Saturn against the immature Mars, the fiery quick moving and Saturn, the slow moving. They are just opposites, right? They are opposites and they are in fixed signs as well. They're in air and in fire. So there could be a feeling of frustration or there could be a feeling of like, oh, like a fighting, a, almost a square feeling here. That's very possible. Uh, if you want to know how crazy it is to be me, this is actually my natal chart. My Mars is in Leo and my Saturn is in Aquarius. So I'm really curious to see what the 30th is going to feel like for me. But I wanted to tell you, you might have a little bit of frustration at the end of the month. If you are um, in your masculine a lot, I recommend being more in the sacral energies and the feminine to just kind of counterbalance that. And finally, we need to pull two goddess cards for the month. So I'm going to put on my readers and then shuffle up the deck. Thank you for your patience with all this information. There's a lot of stuff going on this month. One shuffle. I'm going to shuffle it three times. Pick a goddess card for the first half of the month and then a goddess card for the second half of the month. And let's see what we get. All right. So our first goddess card one that, that is going to inform the first half of the month is Isis, past life, 
this situation involves your past life memories. Hmm. <laughs> so perhaps, because that solar eclipse is, we're actually between eclipses during this time. So this seems very, very fitting because when you have a lunar eclipse, often a solar comes before a lunar, but when a lunar becomes before solar, it stirs everything up first. And then you just keep looking and feeling into it and you get clarity to set intention by the time the solar eclipse comes, or at least hopefully you do, you get some kind of clarity. And I feel like often when we're looking at patterns, and I'm glad I actually picked Isis because this reminds me that when we're looking at Mercury retrograde, we can really remember deeply. I mean, we can go back to past life memories. Um, if we know self-hypnosis, we can just sort of float in that world. Or we can ask ourselves what kind, you can ask yourself, what kind of um, feelings do I have around certain patterns in my life? And do they seem out of proportion for just this life? Because if they're out of proportion for just this life, it's likely they're bringing in past life energy. So for the first half of the month, when we're in Mercury retrograde, check into past life energies with goddess Isis. Let's pick a goddess card for the second half of the month. It is siege and she's about quiet time and what it says is take some quiet time alone to rest meditate and contemplate interesting so now this is when i love when the goddess cards sort of contradict what i'm doing because they balance it out because i know that in the last part of the month once we get out of that mercury retrograde we're going to feel like we just want to go forward but remember Mercury retrograde, even though it goes direct on the 22nd, there's a long shadow period. And I just think it's such a big thing when Mercury's in retrograde that we sometimes in our culture, because we like to move forward so much, we just jump right back into things as soon as it goes direct. But I think it's really good to let it keep marinating. And so Siege is telling us that we should, it's telling us that we should relax in that second half of June. And if that is a time for you when you're graduating from something or your family's getting, uh, kids are getting out of school, maybe you can just have downtime, vacation time, enjoy, begin to enjoy the, the, the beauty of spring. And of course, I could have put the date on the 21st, um, on the 20th, right before our spa day of the, the um, solstice as well the solstice, which is summer for where I'm in the world, winter if you are in the southern hemisphere. So that's it, guys. Thank you for being here for this energy forecast. Please share it, like it, and all that good stuff. I'd appreciate it so much as that supports me in putting the time into making it in the future. I hope you have an incredibly empowering in June and embrace all the spiritual growth that's coming your way. Give yourself lots of loving support through the process and I will see you on the next video. Blessings.